The earth is going to be full of my knowledge. Don't worry about will I be known. Let's see how much of the earth is going to know me. The earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord Yahweh as the waters cover the sea. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 9. Ben Yahweh is here. The son of Yahweh is here. And he's calling for you. Come on and hear. Come on and hear. Come on to the temple. Come on to class. Come and learn. Come and hear. Come and see for yourself. Because the master oh, is the master come. is come on. Come on and go with me. To my father's house. To my father's house. Come on. Come on. I'm inviting you. Come and go with me. Come and go with me. To my father's house. Welcome to International Headquarters for the Nation of Yahweh, the Nation of Israel the tribe of Judah. Welcome. Where we learn our true history, history of our ancient forefathers. Welcome to where you learn our true history that all so-called black people who are suffering from an identity crisis of trying to decide who they are nationalistically. We're steady going through a metamorphosis of from colored people to Negro people to black people to Afro-American people. Now they're saying African-American. And not everybody is agreeing as usual. You can't get my people to agree on everything about anything. But nevertheless, it shows that my people in 1989 are struggling mentally. They're in search of just exactly who are we? Where do we come from? Who should we follow? It's a critical situation involved in America among our people, especially when you admit there are 50 million of us in this country who are undecided about our nationality. There's no need to ask what's wrong with us when you can see we don't know who we are. Anytime you have a people who have forgotten who they are, they call that in psychiatry and in psychology, amnesia. And everyone knows that a man who is suffering from amnesia can't claim his inheritance consciously. He just can't. And people can tell him, well, you're the richest man on the planet. Your father owns oil wells and 20,000 acres of land and it's yours. And the amnesia victim says, what? I don't know that man. Say, but your name is his. What's your name? He says, I don't know. And that's the condition of our people. 
in America. We, as a people, are still trying to find out our nationality. So I'm here to settle the issue that our nationality is Hebrew Israelite. That's who we are. We are the people of the Bible, more specifically the Old Testament Bible. We are the people of the Old Testament Bible. The names Elijah, which is really Eliah, names like Jeremiah, which is really Yermiyahu, names like Joshua, which really in Hebrew is Yahshua. These are your names. These names belong to you. And many of our people have Bible names without ever knowing how valuable that is. I mean, can you imagine a man saying his name is Elijah and then he has an Arab name to go behind it? And then he represent himself as being awake? I mean, you know he's split up. That's like a split personality. Which one are you? Are you an Arab or are you an Elijah? See, and, and Elijah is a Hebrew Israelite name. And uh, the Hebrews came down from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Hmm? Yes. Jacob had 12 sons, became the 12 tribes of Israel, all of whom were Hebrews. Now, the Arabs are kin to Abraham too. He's the direct father of all Arabs. But their mother's name is Hagar. And Hagar was not of the blessed seed that came down from Abraham. They were blessed, but they were not the blessed seed of the 12 tribes of Israel because the Arab's name won't be written in heaven. Where is that? I guess I should let the Bible say some of this, although I have a lot to teach tonight, but I always give up more than I intend to. Revelation chapter 21, verse 12. I'm, I'm not speaking disparagingly about our brothers, the Arabs. Those are our brothers and cousins, whichever they choose to call us. I'm identifying our true kinship, that we are truly of the same father, but the lineage was different. And what's important is not so much to understand or be jealous of all the oil that the Arabs have. Notice one thing, though Abraham was the father of Ishmael and the father of Isaac, I mean the father of, yeah, Isaac, uh, yet the children of Isaac are not getting any royalty checks from the children of Ishmael. Isn't that interesting? The children of Ishmael living in the deserts with all the oil are not sharing it with the children of Isaac. Yet Ishmael and Isaac have the same father. Of course, I'm not jealous of the oil. I made it all. And I, I think they should enjoy all of it while it lasts. I think that's absolutely wonderful. But the point is, I'm telling you, you don't have to be jealous. See, you have another kind of blessing. And after coming through 434 years of slavery in America, you should want a different kind of blessing. Revelation 21, 12, read. And had a wall, great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. 
Okay, now if you don't know what this is, read verse 10. Verse 10, read. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from Yahweh. This is what I'm discussing. The subject is this holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from Yahweh. It belongs to somebody. And we just found that it also in verse 11 has the glory of Yahweh. It's not just some kind of city, but it's an unusual city. First, it's a holy city of peace. Jerusalem means city of peace. So a holy city of peace is going to descend. In order to descend, it means it's high up, beyond the reach of men. Beyond the reach of men. And it's going to come out of heaven, not from men. Now I know the space shuttles are supposed to be going out, and of course, you know, I keep interfering with that. Yeah. <laughs> they're not able to, to prove that they're God, you know, so somebody's interfering with them going and coming out into my heavens. That's just a fact. And they don't want to take a chance on going from this planet Earth out to see what I've done out there. So they plan to send a little spy thing called a little spy camera. They call it a probe to take pictures of, what is that, Venus? They want to go down up under my clouds that I got hidden. And they want to see things. Russia was sending some stuff up there. And so it all failed. I, it went out there and just everything quit working. Never quit working before, but I'm not ready for them to see that right now. I may never, I may never let them see it. That's the way it is. But in the meantime, there's something up there. Huh? that belongs to somebody other than this Russian and this American white man. That's the point. And they can't get to it. See, they want to go and see, but they don't want to stay. See, God can go and stay if he wants to. Go and come when he gets ready, no problem. But see. Whitey doesn't want to go get out there and get stuck. <laughs> he loves raising hell, so he, he, he wants to go out and then keep everything a secret from you, what he see. Huh? Yeah, call it classified. I mean, hey, you didn't make it. How are you going to classify it? But he wants to come back and play God over you while he's out there trying to find out the secrets of Yahweh. In the meantime, there's something way out there that's belonging to Yahweh. That's what I see. And it's a great city. It, it's, it's, it's not like what you see. I mean, see, you used to Miami. <laughs> You probably don't call Miami great. In fact, you probably are scared to walk around in most of it. I'm the only one creating a truly safe environment where you can come and, and leave your door open and come back and everything is still in there. Glory. In the meantime, there's something greater than Miami, is my point. See, that's a great city that belongs to Yahweh that doesn't have any ghettos in it. <laughs> you understand? I mean, there's no drugs in it. See, it can't be holy and then have unholiness in it. 
Yeah, you, you, you see, you have to understand what holy is. It's not just a, a great city with taller buildings, and better air conditioning. <laughs> see, Yahweh is greater than that. He, he has a holy Jerusalem. And it, it, it doesn't belong to Ishmael. You know, the Ishmaelites are the Arabs today. See, they got that thing. I'm, I'm letting them get all they can get from selling oil. Now, if they don't save any money from all this oil that they've been selling the white folks, well, hey, I could have told you from the beginning they were a wild ass of a man. Oh, 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 you think I'm being mean, I know, but I really quoted the book. Genesis 1612. I'm really not using language like you think. I'm, I'm really quoting the book, I really am. I never do say things that's not nice. Genesis 1612, read. And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man. He'll blow up ships and blow up planes. He'll shoot up cities, boy, like in Lebanon. I mean, hey, kill, kill. Hey, hey you know. You say something that I don't like, it's called go to war, boy. I'll shoot, I'll blow myself up just to get some of y'all. He like that. The wild man. Huh? And he'll dwell in the presence of all his brethren. That means I don't care what country you go to, you'll find some Ishmaelites. You'll find some Arabs, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. And if you make them mad enough, they'll get mad everywhere. They'll turn wild on you everywhere. <laughs> you may not believe that, I don't care whether you believe it or not, I'm just telling you. Now go back to Revelation 21 and check out again that there is a great city of peace that is holy. That means nothing unholy is in it. That also means something else. It means that people that do not want to be holy. Well, let me show you what kind of people that won't be in it. Go to verse 8. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't need to take all this time. Let's let the book do the talking. Verse 8, let's look, look and see what kind of people not in this city. Read. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now that's what's going on, that's going to go on outside of this great city, Holy Jerusalem. Look who will all be your friends if you don't choose me. All of your friends will be full of fear. And people that don't follow Yahweh, I guarantee you, if you look around the city, they're scared. And I'll bet you it's not just Miami. Huh? If you think it's just Miami, start traveling. And you'll see, we've been all over the country. See, we've seen the ghetto from coast to coast. Hmm? And we saw fear everywhere. So all your friends will never stand up for what's good. They're full of, they have too much fear. So all your friends, if you don't choose Yahweh, your friends will all be unbelievers. You have a bunch of unbelieving neighbors. You go to your neighbor and ask him, what you believe in? He say, I'm unbelieving. I don't know how to believe in anything. I'm an unbeliever about everything. Then you'll have some neighbors that are abominable. They'll have, they believe in abominable acts. You know, that, you know, AIDS. They, you, some of your neighbors will be switching right on by you. And... <laughs> yes, he will. I mean, her will or he will or she will. Whatever it is, it'll be switching on by you. Full of AIDS. If you don't follow Yahweh and, and, and come into this great city, 
All your neighbors will be cooking pork, eating worms, fried ants, chocolate covered roaches, <laughs> little rat stew, be boiling pig guts. Yeah, you have all that going on. That, that's who your friends are when you don't follow me. It's the way it is. I bet you you can find it just like that. And everybody's a whoremonger. Hmm? Love to be among whores. What? I bet you you can find that in every city across America. That's who your neighbors will be if you don't follow me. And you'll find people who believe in, 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 in fortune tellers. Yeah, astrologers. Roots. And I don't mean Alex Haley, I mean <laughs> be hollering, your mojo is working. Believe in voodoo and hoodoo. Yeah, you believe in all the do's and the don'ts. <laughs> your neighbors will be people who worship idols. Gods that can't hear, see, feel, move, talk, act, can't do nothing. Just, they just believe in anything. And they're also liars. Huh? I mean, they say, I'm telling the truth this time. <laughs> Honest, man, I mean, for real now. No, I mean, for real, man, for real. If you're honest and for real, why does a man have to keep on trying to convince you? I mean, you know, you know, man, I ain't kidding. You know, for real this time, I mean, this is for real, man. I mean, I'm telling you the truth, man, brother, for real. You know, I mean, hey, check it out. I'm talking about it for real truth, man. I mean, you know, I know I've been a liar all the time before, but see, now, now, Jack, see, I'm, I'm coming clean, boy. I mean, you know, all the dirt behind me. I mean, come on, trust me, man, trust me. If you go for that, you're in a world of trouble because he's already a liar. So, when you get down to the great city, in verse 10, then none of these kind of people are there. Isn't that, isn't that something? That none of the wicked kind of folk will be in the great city, holy Jerusalem, that's going to descend out of heaven from Yahweh. This means that somebody has to come to the earth and let the people know this is really coming. It really is coming from the God of heaven. Now, if you don't believe that, that's okay too, but somebody still has to come and bear witness to the earth that this is genuine. That's what I'm doing. I'm here to tell you, look up in your dictionary the name Yahweh. Look up in your encyclopedias, look in Bible Interpreters Dictionary. Look this name up and you'll discover Yahweh is the God of the Bible. Now, it's up to you to search that out. You can't sit back and say, I didn't tell you to look it up. Neither can you say, I told you to believe it because I said it. Here's a name that's written down in books before any of us were born in this present body. That is the ancient God of Israel. And his name is Yahweh. He's the one that has built this city, Yahweh. This great city, holy, holy Jerusalem. Yahweh is the architect. The great architect of the universe built this. And I'm here on the earth to bear witness this is so. And it's truly coming. And I'm showing you that there's a group of people that's not going to be allowed inside. All unholy folk won't be inside. Now guess what? Most unholy people don't want to come inside. 
So when I come to the earth to warn the earth that this is coming, it's not to try to change the mind of unholy people. It's to allow them the same opportunity I did in the days of Noah. They were allowed to make a choice, but Yahweh had Noah build a ship that wouldn't take care of the whole earth. Wonder why? He knew they wouldn't choose. That's how smart Yahweh is. Now, this Bible tells you it's going to be the same way today as it was then. Matthew chapter 24, verse 37. I have to tell you this. There are people who will take a vow to Yahweh and after they take it, walk away from Yahweh. Now there's only one way a person can do that. He never believed in Yahweh in the first place. And never believe in the promise of Yahweh. In other words, this is the person who believes Yahweh is impotent. You know, doesn't have the power to manifest his will. So they return to the world to live it up as we see here in Matthew 24, 37. Read. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man, Yahweh bin Yahweh be. Now, I wonder what it's going to be like. Now, this is the way it was in Noah's day. Now read the next verse, verse 38, read. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Now, what kind of mind are unholy folk going to have? It's in the next verse. What's going to be the results? Read. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. How many? All. Uh-huh. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man, Yahweh bin Yahweh, be. Now, if you look around, you'll see that every chair is not taken. You know why? Because they don't want to hear about heaven. People have more important things to do than to hear about the great city, holy Jerusalem, coming down from heaven, from Yahweh. They'd rather be out there eating, going to different restaurants tonight, drinking all kinds of expensive wine and liqueurs, marrying, shacking, laying. Hmm? Well, it's the truth. Right? Yes, sir. I mean, everybody's tricking everybody so they can get away and lay with somebody else and tell you how sweet stolen waters are. Huh? Now go back to Revelation 21 because see, all these kind of folk are not going to be in this great city. People that like the lifestyle of Matthew 24. 37 through 39, they, they're not interested in New Jerusalem. But I'm come to bear witness to the whole earth. For who? For those who want out of hell. And when I come, I don't come and just attract those that are good. Wish I did, but it's not working like that. It, it's written that it wouldn't work out like that. <laughs> Let's go to Job and see that when I come, go to Job chapter 1. Let me, let me show you what I have to go through in coming to get the sons of God. See, when, when the sons of Yahweh come, 
You can't come by yourself. People that don't like me come too. Yeah, they come with you. People that hate what I'm doing come with you that love what I'm doing. They hate what I'm doing and come anyway. They don't come to help me build up the kingdom of heaven. They come to take heaven away from you and seek to destroy you in the process. Now let's go to Job chapter 1 verse 6. Let's check out what's going on around here today. Read. Now there was a day when the sons of Yahweh came to present themselves before the Lord Yahweh, and Satan came also among them. Uh-huh. See what's going on? We have proof too. We have proof, proof of people coming here saying they love me, eat at my table, sleep with my daughters, huh? Leave me their kids to take care of. Huh? Yes. And then go out and join our open oppressor and try their best to destroy me. And all I did was good. And all I did was good to them. But see, it tells you who they are, Satan. And you have proof of what I taught you from the beginning, that Satan is black, brown, red, yellow, and white. But see, white devils didn't come in here and pretend to love me. They don't even pretend like that. They, they don't even, they didn't come and pretend not for a minute. Black devils came. And then you know who the white devils are. They're the ones that only want to hear what the black devils who hate me have to say. And that's all they'll put in the paper or say on television is what my enemy, my hypocrite, one who wants to destroy what I'm doing, that's the only one they want to hear. That's all they quote. And then they want to ask me questions about what do I think about some hypocrite statement. I wear them out now. They, that's why I haven't been. I, they interview me, but I don't be on TV now. <laughs> when, they, when they start putting me on TV now, boy, it'll be, you'll know it's the end. You, I'm serious. You know what I mean? You'll know the devil has capitulated to my sovereignty. When he start putting me on now, I mean, I am. I'm unrelenting in my faithful witness into Yahweh. I do not address a devil's question about a devil. I just witness Yahweh. That's all I do. And in verse 7, the only one who talked to Satan is Yahweh. That's me. Why? Because my sheep, my sons, don't know who Satan is. He looked just like you. I mean, he's your same color. He, he wears a robe, he jumps up and down and hollers and screams. Sometimes they holler Yahweh louder than anybody else. It's the truth. I mean, then you look around and you don't see the nigga. If you ever zeroed in on the nigga, then you'll say, wonder what happened to him? That brother, he never was your brother if you were righteous. Now, if you are an unholy person, you're asking truly about your brother. That's the truth. Where is my brother? If he's unholy, I, you just ranked yourself with me. I, I said, mm-hmm. You can't sleep and hide and slip around here anymore. You just ranked yourself. Boy. Back to Revelation 21. I'm going to a point talking about this great city in verse 10, holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from Yahweh. In verse 11, it has the glory of Yahweh and a light that is just unlike any other light. It's, it's like a jasper stone and the light of this great city is like clear as crystal. 
These are things that you don't understand the mystery of. You read it, but you don't understand the mystery of this. Oh, I know you don't. You can claim you do. See, anybody who understands this will never believe it. And will go through whatever tests to get into it. I mean, who would ever leave a great city, a holy city, directly from the God of heaven, Yahweh, and, and, and have good sense? But it's clear as a crystal and a wall great and high. Twelve gates. And at the gates, twelve angels. And names written there on those twelve gates, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Now you know it can't be the, the, the Jews because they don't claim no tribe. they just Israelis. Of course we know all about where they come from. We know exactly who they are. I mean we got that down to the T. And since I'm here they don't even fool with me talking about it because see I'll, I'll say Kazar in a minute. Kazar, you know. I'll say Sephardin in a minute. You know that'll square them right on out right on back off into silence. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I sure know. <laughs> I'm here to tell you that the so-called black man of America is one of these 12 tribes. All 12 tribes are black. I mean, it's not that black's the issue, it's just that's the way it is. You understand the mystery? You know, I'm, I'm not pushing black supremacy, I'm just pushing supremacy. You know, that's what I believe in. I, I am supreme. Now, the, just the fact that I'm not white, that's tough, you know, see? <laughs> that's too bad for them, because see, I told them in the court, they asked me that question, and I said, yes, I'm, I'm supreme over everybody, all of y'all collectively together. Your mind can't come up to mine. That's, you got that right. Uh, that's the record. It's a matter of, of the record on the federal court for the government. Uh, when I testify, they, they say, well, I understand that you are a genius. I said, no. No, I'm not a genius. They say, oh yeah, right, you are the genius. I said, no, that's right. I am the genius. Right. They just wanted to have it in the record. Because see, there was no argument about it. The one that asked me the question was supposed to be my opponents. And they're the ones that got all this good stuff in the record. Because I was testifying to reality. I'm not A.G., I am the genius. You got that right. Y'all are right now. I have mind power over every brain collective on the planet. You want to you want a clear cut logical proof right now? I can give you a logical proof that my mind is superior to all minds combined. See, all the minds combined have been unable to bring peace on earth. And I'm here bringing peace. I've established peace in Yahweh University, and I have peace in my kingdom. I said, the United Nations, where all the nations sitting down in New York, can't bring peace. And they have all the weapons formed by the hands of man, and use them too, and cannot bring peace. I've taken all weapons from us, and establish peace. Now I still have a little one or two that mumble, but they mumble under their breath. You know, it's a cool mumble. <laughs> Cause, see, if you mumble, you're not satisfied. So I'm gonna put you out of here. That's all. Hey, you don't have to stay here and be unhappy. You don't be telling no lie about you get in, can't get out. It's can you get in? See, that's the real question. 
It really is. The question is, can you get in here? And then once you get in, see, your problem has just begun. Yeah. Can you stay in here? <laughs> yes. And see, all the good that you've done up until today, it's not enough. I've come to bear witness on the earth, inviting all good people. Come, follow me. All I'm going to teach you is how to be good. It's one thing you've never learned in your life, how to be holy. Now, in, in, in Matthew 5, 48, let's turn to that. Read. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. See, the word didn't say try to be. It didn't say you ought to be. It didn't say there are excuses you could make for not being. Now here we are asked to be something that we've never been taught how to be. No school you have ever attended teaches you how to qualify to be with your father, which is in heaven. No school you've attended in all of your life has taught you and qualified you to enter this great city. Holy Jerusalem, that is to descend out of heaven, owned by Yahweh, given to you from Yahweh himself. And notice the Arab's name is not written in heaven. Only 12 names get that honor. 